I, okay. okay, I will try now. Here we go. Um, it's uh, thank you so much um, for coming this morning. Uh, this is our uh, second uh, COVID. I'm sorry, third COVID and surgery conversation. Um, hosted by uh, UTHSC, uh, Department of Surgery, Global Surgery Institute. My name is Nia Zalamea. I'm the director of the Institute, and we're so um, grateful to have all of you here this morning with us on an early Friday morning, um, but most especially um, uh, to welcome Dr. Maria Marcella Bailez. Um, she is um, the head of Garahan Children's Hospital um, in the surgery department there. She's a leader in pediatric minimally invasive surgery. Um, and has uh, developed countless curriculums, um, both written, visual, video-based, um, which uh, some of which we benefited from at the beginning of the pandemic, and um, is the director of pediatric minimally invasive surgery training courses at her institution as well. Um, this is all affi in affiliation with um, the University um, and Northeast National University in Argentina and the University of Buenos Aires, which is where she uh, received her medical degree her fellowship in pediatric surgery at the Gutierrez uh, Children's Hospital of, of uh, Buenos Aires. And she also completed um, a research fellowship at Johns Hopkins University uh, School of Medicine. Um, as she said earlier, before uh, we started recording, she's um, an avid climber. Um, she is uh, passionate about her family and children and, uh, we're, and, and education in general, but most especially um, uh, virtual and simulation, uh, which uh, we will um, discuss all those things this morning. So thank you so much, um, Dr. Maria Marcella Bailas, um, for joining us. Well, I'm really honored and I hope not to disappoint you. Uh, this is a message. This, this will not be like an academic <laughs> lecture, you know. That's why I have my favorite lake at the back, as I told you, because it's we have to have dreams during these hard times and uh, i met nia in in, in in an environment of sages and education and a group of that we call ositas where that is uh, small beers female beers because as you know i have been the president of ipec in 2016 and uh, the ipec has a small beers as uh, the International PR Endoscopic Group, uh, that was the first time that I was a woman president. So I, I put the pink beer as, <laughs> no, no, I'm not a feminist, I, uh, but it was funny that we, we love to have fun also. And so I hope we can share, we can learn from each other. And I, I, this is not a formal lecture, as I say, and I prepared something for you, but we can, we can change anytime. And so I will start uh, sharing my back, my computer, my screen, and I will change to my to a formal background of Garaham, please, just not to be <laughs> so informal. And so now we will start. I hope you see my screen. This is an old picture of our hospital. Our hospital is a 600 bed children's hospital, public hospital in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. It is national and it is devoted to uh, uh, high medicine uh, protocols and uh, we receive patients from all the nation, even it is in the city. Buenos Aires is this, the capital of Argentina. We have 137 intensive care pediatric beds. This is only a pediatric hospital and more or less 11,000 surgeries, but they are all high standard surgeries, complex surgeries, most of them. So when I selected this picture because there were times when we were having a birthday of the hospital. It's a less than 40 years old hospital. We were able to go outside and have a picture like this that we are not anymore. So as the head of surgery, I had the responsibility when COVID arrives. And I can tell you, the first thing I, I felt is I had to preserve this group of specialists because uh, 
This is the place where we do transplants, where we do our oncologic surgery, the MIS. So what are we going to do? And you know, in, in, in countries like in Latin American countries, uh, we don't have high standards coming from, from yes, from government. So I believe that each citizen has to develop and work for standards. And so the passion that you put in your work is essential. So I might have gone and stayed at home because I am 63. I have an acute coronary in 2010. So I have a stent. So if I went to the doctor, this is a public hospital and I will still get my salary. Yes. So there was a group of people here that even uh, with uh, health uh, problems could have left state. And so we made a very strong group with nearly 50% of people coming. And I say people because, you know, in a big hospital like this, you need a, a lot of administrative work, a lot of nurses, a lot of everything. So we work completely different and we fight for things. And now we are coming to back. Even we have more cases of COVID in Argentina. And that's what I will show you. And it's, it's from this background that I will talk. Of course, we can always do better. But I think that we are tired and we have gone through very, very difficult times uh, struggling for the elements of protection for everyone, struggling for testing, testing, pre testing all patients and mothers coming into the hospitals, working hard for that. But, and sometimes one against the others because nobody knew anything about this. We don't have evidence base. We didn't have evidence base in March when we started and we were doing our best. So this is sometimes what I, I, I will show you. I want to go on. This is COVID in Argentina, and I get this from the formal office from, from, from the government, but you see the positives and the deaths, positivos y muertes. And you see through the time, the numbers, and the whole numbers of positives and deaths and how they evolved starting in May, June, July, August, October, and September. This is something strange that you might not have lived. Our government made what is called quarantena, what it, I understand that the, the translation is confined. So we were not able to go out, I mean, of course, as doctors, we need to have certificates to move around the streets and the police stopped us during a long period of time, which of course the economy did very bad, but the government was very excited and very proud to say that they were saving the citizens from getting sick with that. And that was, look, what it says here, the quarantine, which is the confined, was, was kept by the population until June. Here it says the high, 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 and here, no way. So starting September, we stopped being confined and people started working more and traveling with, of course, with some kind, always with a mask, I mean, it is an obligation for us to wear masks. I, I understand that now it happened, it's happened in the United States, but it was for, for us, this was what was happening. And I wanted to show you this, which is quarantine is confined and, and distance maneuvers or, or protocols are in different colors. But as, as you can see in March, April, May, June, July, we have a, a long 
a quarantine imposed by the government. But we still were working in the hospital and trying to do and doing surgery, but not the, the number of surgery that we were doing. But then starting, oh, now we are only using these kind of protocols of distance and masks. So it was a long-term uh, quarantine that we had. And this is just an example what we receive every week from our director of the hospital. This is for the hospital. This is the patients that are COVID positive and the patients that are recovered total in the whole time. This is our total. And this is the personal. I mean, people working in the hospital. There's one of the directors of the hospital takes care of this and we are informed every week of how many infected, how many recovered. Um, and of course it has to be with people that are permanent and people which, which are under education like residents and people that are, um, have a contract, suppose for cleaning or, or security. So this is the way that we are uh, kept informed of how we are doing our work in the hospital. Uh, isopados is people tested with PCR and up till now, 23,500 23, uh, approximately. Our, all our hospitals had been, or our patients have been tested starting very early when they were kept in the hospital. And we have a specific area areas for COVID and we have been using our uh, protection uh, early, very early. There are some videos that I, I decided to make them home. They were homemade videos made, made by me, by my young daughter who likes working. She studied movie production and she helped me a lot with the nurses and we made our protocols of how to dress, of how to move. We have special areas for COVID inside the hospital or also we decided to have our special protocols. And in that way, we started working with smaller group, doing everything, anything, because as health surgery, I have some mission, but at that time I have every mission that was needed. And even, I love education, so I am in charge of the 